Hi, this is Estev. Many work conversations are just casual chats over a lunch or in between meetings, where people pay little or no attention to how they communicate. We chose one of these daily situations to show you how easy it is to unknowingly create misunderstandings by examining how the three levels of communication work together in a casual lunch meeting. We'll first analyze the verbal communication techniques, which are the words people say, symbolized here on the icon as white sound bites. Then we'll look more deeply at how the verbal level is heavily influenced by how people communicate, which we'll call the nonverbal behaviors, symbolized with the little spinning flag-like icons. Finally, we'll connect the three levels by looking at the intentions level driving why people communicate, for which we'll use a white target-like icon because it's the target of our communication. You remember the three colors, blue for that which belongs to me, green for that which belongs to the other, and red for that which could become common in terms of action from the video about the basics of green, blue, red theory. In this video, we'll be looking more deeply at the three colors of nonverbal communication, while the three colors of the intentions and verbal techniques will be covered more deeply in other videos separately. In this snapshot of communication, we are color coding Anu, who is arriving late to meet her colleague Alina, sitting, waiting for a conversation to help her with the next steps of her career. Anu arrives still on the phone. And she says to Alina, this is the insurance company, I'm just queuing. And after a little while, how did your feedback go? If we take the question part, it's green because Anna is focusing on Elena with her words, yet her non-verbal timing in this case is very self-centered with an assumed red intention of fixing problems by Elena. The green question is most likely to be considered by Elena as a way to fix her problems instead of genuine respect or curiosity. The three levels are not aligned. We call this incongruent. Without realizing it, Anu is giving mixed signals to Elena by displaying green at the verbal level, blue at the nonverbal, and red at the intention level. No wonder Elena seems to be slightly confused. This time, notice the formulation which Anu uses. You've now done the peer feedback and the self-reflection. How did it all go, she says. The green question comes just after a green statement. And her non-verbal communication is green silence, which means talking with active listening, with an assumed intention of building trust. Can you see the difference with the first situation? Which would you rather have from your own supervisor? Here, the verbal, non-verbal, and intentions are all the same color. According to Professor Mehabian from the University of UCLA, the nonverbal elements are particularly important for communicating feelings and attitude, especially when they are incongruent. If words and body language disagree, one tends to believe the body language. It's therefore important to try and align what we say with how we say it. This alignment or disalignment is one of the ways that we can detect the difference between manipulation and influence. Influence is aligned communication, which makes things much more clear. Whereas manipulation is hiding a misaligned intention behind unclear communication. It's easy to point a finger at the way other people communicate, but let's first remember that we can all unconsciously confuse people through our unclear signals. Manipulation is an interesting word. It comes from the Latin manipulus, connected to the idea of hands shaping another person's actions, like in the Roman army when the centurion leaders would craft with their hands their units called manipul into a square formation, but without being open about their deeper and often hidden intentions. Manipulation can be detected partly by looking at how congruent or aligned people's communication is. So if incongruence is one of the first reasons people misunderstand each other, 
What else can cause misunderstandings? Since the beginning of history, humans have been looking for ways to understand each other with a common language. You might have heard of the ancient myth of the Babel Tower, which comes from the Bible. The myth says that humans, who were still speaking only one single language, agreed to build a tower tall enough to reach heaven. God, who was clearly against the plan, confounds their speech so that they can no longer understand each other and therefore the tower was never finished. The myth, despite being very old, has inspired many to try and recreate a universal common language. For example, last century Zamenhof created Esperanto, aiming to build an easy language that would foster peace and international understanding. Unfortunately, Esperanto grew only to be used by a small number of people. Today, we have a handful of global languages, which are, in order of most speakers around the world, first Chinese, then Spanish, English, Hindi, Arabic, Portuguese, Bengali and Russian. Now that's a lot of languages to learn. But what if there was a way to build cross-cultural communication despite all these language barriers? Researchers have been looking into this. Here's the good news. According to Professor Albert Mehabian's rule of personal communication, your spoken words are a tiny fraction, only 7% of what is read by the receiver, particularly in the expression of feelings. Your voice's pitch, tone, speed and rhythm expresses five times more than what you say. Also, your gestures, posture and expressions and what actors call status, convey a variety of subtle signals which represent more than 50% impact on your communication. These 93% of nonverbal elements give a more accurate indication about the speaker's feelings and intentions than the 7% of words. When you use all these nonverbal cues to understand people's feelings and intentions, you're one step closer to understanding people across cultures. Theo Cox, a sociologist who was particularly interested in helping people understand each other, first highlighted the importance of differentiating the three colours already in the 1970s. I remember him saying that wars are due to meaningful conversations that never happened. He always intended to stop political and other large-scale manipulation in the world. At that time, the most powerful question I could think of was how might we use green, blue, red to empower people to have meaningful conversations? Theo was concerned that it would be too difficult to empower people on a large scale with only the three colours, who could so easily be misinterpreted. So we decided to develop and design a coding language to visualise how communication is aligned between what people say, how they say it and why they say it. We use sports tech studio code software, which is normally used to live code sport events like football, hockey matches, and count the number of passes and other rapid actions of the team. Now, we use this to develop a coding language to color code live and written communication. By using video ethnography, our team combined the analytical power of psychology and semiotics to design a coding language which could accurately and rapidly analyze any conversation. Just like the business model canvas by Alexander Osterwalder shown here, which uses nine labels to describe and create a common language for working on business models, Green Elephant proposes to use nine buckets which describe any situation of communication. It uses the three levels of verbal, nonverbal and intentions of communication. This new coding language is intended to be used in an open source way both in academic research and for mapping workplace communication. If you're a communication researcher or computer scientist, please contact Green Elephant if you're interested in joining the ongoing development projects. Because the nonverbal behaviors are more impactful than the verbal techniques, for now, let's start by focusing on the green, blue and red behaviors with some concrete examples. And we'll leave the verbal and intention levels for later videos. Let's start with silence. As you can see, the colored icons have a white casing, which reminds me of four spinning flags symbolizing that we're looking at behaviors and actions, the 93% of what we communicate. Surprisingly for some, 
Even silence communicates on your behalf. For northerners who cultivate the art of respectful silence as a culture, this one is especially important. Blue silence is when you turn your focus towards yourself, your thoughts or feelings. Sometimes this happens when you zone out and get lost in your own mind. Blue silence is sometimes seen in offices when people, by wearing headphones, communicate a non-verbal signal which means, I need to focus, please don't interrupt. You can think of blue silence as a self-reflective silence to focus within and think. Like with this woman, status can be communicated through a dramatically imposed red silence. For example, when used in combination with red body language, which we'll also see in this video. Red silence is also called pregnant silence because it silently suggests an action to the other. It's when silence is used to trigger an action or convey a message. Musicians can perform while at the same time listening. It's a learned skill. Green silence is associated with active listening. It's when you listen to simply understand rather than to answer, agree or disagree with the other. Active listening doesn't necessarily mean that you're silently listening to the other for hours. If you've been lucky enough to experience excellent customer service, you'll know that good customer service starts from a green silence when you complain. So blue silence is self-reflective silence. Red silence is a pregnant silence, while green silence is for active listening. Adapting to any culture naturally involves learning to use these three different silences in a culturally appropriate manner. As a Frenchman adapting to Finnish culture, I was surprised at how much blue silence Finns were using as a form of respect. Just like silence, timing can also be color coded. Comedians usually master the three colors of timing and know exactly how to twist them to highlight humor in everyday situations. A common form of blue timing is, for example, your colleague walking in to interrupt a meeting. Blue timing is also called self-centered timing. It's when you choose to communicate in your own time when you need something. Like with a fire alarm, there's a time for urgent actions. But if communication is always based on red timing, it creates a challenging, reactive work environment like in fire and rescue services. Red timing comes from imposed deadlines or any other external reason for common action. Opening a door for somebody when their hands are full at the exact moment they need it is green timing. It's when the timing is right for the other person. Calling a person at a time of day which you know suits them best is also green and could be called considerate timing. You probably know from experience that no matter how well you speak, if the timing is off, it won't turn out the way you've planned. So before communicating, ask yourself, are you choosing the timing which suits you? Are you firefighting or adapting the timing to others? Intonation is like the musicality of communication, broken down into the melody, pitch, volume and tone of your voice. The melody is very culturally specific, like in the Norwegian language, which has a very melodic intonation compared to Finnish language. The pitch shows your emotions, with a high-pitched voice often showing emotional tension while your deeper relaxed low pitch shows calmness and control. The changing volume is when you quietly whisper or when you're shouting to encourage others. Your tone of voice is when you use a sharp, aggressive or screechy tone instead of a soft, late-night DJ tone of voice, for example. Let's then see how to color code your intonation. A speaker, host or performer like Mariah Carey can create a unique personality around their pitch and tone of voice. When a teenager answers too quietly to a parent, they're using blue volume. When you use a different accent and melody than others around you with a foreign accent, for example, it's also considered to be blue intonation. Blue is self-centered intonation which is chosen by the communicator. Red is urgent, louder, higher pitch intonation, often used when there is a common need for quick action. The urgency in the voice can be for cheering, but also for warning others of an immediate danger, 
When used all the time at work as the main intonation, it can be perceived as a form of aggression by others, particularly if the local cultural habit is to be quieter. A therapist learns to adapt their intonation to each patient to do their work effectively. Empathic intonation is based on the other's needs and feelings, keeping their deep reassuring voice while adapting the loudness to the other. If a person whispers, you might lower your voice to adapt. The key to using green intonation is adjusting your intonation to others. The more familiar your intonation, the greener it becomes for them. That's how comedians can get people to laugh by imitating accents. So, how do you usually talk? Are you adapting your intonation to different cultures and situations? Is the volume, tone and pitch your own, urgent or adapting to the other person? To musicians and linguists, rhythm is a mixture of tempo, which musicians call BPM, and the silences in between the notes or the words. So how do we color code rhythm? When you set the speed of a conversation, like a performer does on stage, it's blue. Blue rhythm is talking or communicating in your own pace. If you only use your rhythm when you talk, you'll probably end up experiencing some resistance when working with others. We chose this icon with the two people arguing to remind you of what happens when people stubbornly use only their own rhythm. Sooner or later, it will create conflicts. So blue rhythm needs to be used at the right time. When the marching rhythm is given to every single soldier by their commander, the tempo is red. Red rhythm is when we speed up or slow down the rhythm of a group. The pause icon was used because at work, when you host a conversation, it's often good to use red rhythm to offer a pause when people need to take a break. Imposing a particular rhythm of talking and resting to others in a meeting or workshop is considered to be a red rhythm. Mirroring or adapting to another person's rhythm, for example by slowing yourself down to help a person cross the road, can make communication and interactions easier. Green rhythm is when you adapt to someone else's rhythm. This could also be speeding up and getting to the point in a conversation to adapt to your listener's lowering level of interest. So now, in what rhythm are you most often communicating? Your own? Are you following or proposing a common rhythm? Or are you choosing to adapt your rhythm to others? Body language is our posture, what we do and where we move our body in space. It's an important part of how actors use status to play different roles convincingly. If you're trying to pump up your self-confidence or build trust with others, these three behaviours are really useful for you to focus on. Blue can naturally be the confident notice me body language as suggested by the figure standing with arms up in the icon. But also, the shy, please just ignore me look from the photo is also blue. The body language of shy introverts who are trying to hide and notice me extroverts who are trying to attract attention are both displaying a primary focus on themselves for different reasons. If you want to increase your confidence, try using green body language, which is more effective to boost social kudos and confidence than blue body language is. Offering someone a beer to cheer them up, hugging, touching, shaking hands, all are red body language. Red body language aims towards action. Again with red, it's all about timing. Red is a powerful tool when you use it at the right time in the right amount. If not, it can easily be perceived as pushy or insensitive. Sitting down, as this father is doing with his daughter, instead of talking while standing above her, is green because he is adapting his body language to her. Green body language aims to adapt to another's status and lowers the risk of pointless ego battles. It's a very powerful way to establish trust with strangers, for example, in a job interview. Be mindful that copying or mimicking others, for example, like he's doing here with the pen, particularly when you have hidden or manipulative intentions, can easily backfire since it could be interpreted as you making fun of them. What about you? 
How do you communicate with your body language? How consciously do you choose between using your own posture, stepping into action, and adapting your body language to others? In order for you to influence others in a conscious manner, it's important to understand how to color code your social interactions. This is my favorite way to summarize all the behaviors we've seen to leaders who are used to performing, coaching, or facilitating groups. Just like when you've received a piece of good news, you place the spotlight of focus on yourself to express your joy. It's when you openly express how you feel with your facial expressions, body language, and posture. This is the non-verbal behavior which goes with talking from the heart, when the emotions are clearly expressed. Expressing is also having the feeling that it's okay to do what you want when you have the permission or authorization to express yourself. Now this changes enormously according to the culture you're in and the hierarchical role you hold in an organization. As suggested, in the red icon of the house, hosting a safe space is a bit like having guests at home. You're holding space by serving the collective needs. At work, it's when you step up to the flip chart and host a conversation to help the collective intelligence move forwards, as opposed to just expressing your own opinions, thoughts and needs which are blue. Red behavior is when you place your spotlight of focus on common action. We'll cover the difference between hosting and facilitating later in the red video. Just remember, with red behavior, timing is everything. Untimely hosting is perceived in many cultures as an aggression, so make sure you have used enough green to establish a feeling of psychological safety for the group before stepping up to host a group or a conversation. Green behavior is when you place the spotlight of focus on the other. There are many different ways of understanding presencing. For Otto Sharma from MIT, who set up the Presencing Institute, the idea of presencing is to hold space for the other, be present, and help them to clarify their thinking without interfering with their decisions or judging them. In presencing, you help someone to reflect by using other green techniques, such as green questions, summarizing, labeling, and mirroring. This builds trust between the pair. We chose a tree in the icon because presencing helps collective intelligence to grow from conversations, as it places listening and sensing, instead of actions or burning decisions, at the center of the conversation. Many introverts have been amazed at how much confidence presencing brings them. This is because when they place their spotlight of focus on others, it's away from them. Looking at social interactions is the quickest way to upgrade your nonverbal communication. The first step is to pause every once in a while to reflect on where you place your spotlight of focus. Are you focusing on expressing yourself to be understood, creating some common action, or focused on being present to understand others? This is one of the ways we can improve international and cross-cultural understanding, more than trying to learn dozens of languages because our body language speaks louder than our words. Now that we've seen each of these behaviors, you're probably wondering if it's even possible to keep track of all of them. The good news is that there's a shortcut, which is using the behaviors together with the intentions level. Focusing on the level of intentions is like a communication hack to get along across cultures. Communication becomes a lot easier and like driving a car automatic when you become conscious of your and other people's intentions. As we unpack these blue, red, and green universal intentions in the following videos, along with the verbal techniques, you'll see how it's possible for you to become a much clearer and more conscious communicator. You've now seen an overview of how the three levels of communication work together. We took a deeper look at the 18 non-verbal behaviors and here are the takeaways from this video summarized for you in this downloadable infographic. First, go beyond the verbal, which is only 7% of what is understood. Secondly, nonverbal signals help you to be understood and understand others, particularly across cultures. Thirdly, 
Clarify your intentions by being clear about why you communicate, first with yourself and then with others. This is the key or hack to help you communicate clearly without having to spend years training your verbal techniques and non-verbal behaviors. This green-blue-red coding language can help you to align your words, your behaviors with your intentions. And therefore, it makes it easier for you to be understood. You've now been through the green-blue-red basic theory and the three levels of communication. If you want to start putting this into practice, the first step is to be aware of the colors in your own life. The quickest way to deeply understand how people communicate is to color code what they're saying and doing. How are you and others around you communicating? What colors are they and you using? How could you have communicated differently? Start paying attention to the colors in your life. The next step is starting to use the colors. Doodle your meeting flip charts or collective notes in color, for example. You could use blue for our team, green for the client or others in the meeting, and red for what was agreed. Next time a meeting is needing more challenge for you to reach flow, you can practice color coding the meeting by printing yourself a copy of the infographic with all the icons to take your notes in one of those classic four colored pens. I usually write in green the most important questions or insights covered by the group during the meeting. In blue, what I shared or my observations, comments and notes. I use red for the to-dos and agreed deadlines which were harvested during the meeting. You can also color code what you read. Reports, emails, speeches, copy for websites or social media content. Decide who is the anchor for coloring in blue, me or we as an organization. Then you can highlight in red the call to action content, any information in blue, and use green, for example, to highlight the benefits for your users, customers or clients. You'll notice how powerful green copy and visuals can be in online marketing. Do it for yourself, do it for others, and do it as often as you can to develop your razor-sharp observation skills. Here are two powerful questions to feed your self-reflection. Beyond the words you write and speak, what color non-verbal communication do you use most often? This can help you identify where you need to align your words with your actions.